Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. We're on the inside of the Vauxhall Corsa this week because it's fairly cold outside to be honest, but we need to get the rear brakes sorted out. Uh, now on this car, the rear brakes are drum brakes, so we need to replace the shoes on the inside. So I'm gonna show you how to do that this time. Okay, so car's jacked up, all nice and safe, and what I've got is I've got the Delphi brake parts kit, and I've got the Packard brake shoes to fit. Now, the thing to remember with this is, even using the, the uh, car registration checker, it gets it wrong on this car. So do make sure and measure the size. Unfortunately, I've had three sets of these now sent by different providers and they got them wrong. So I'm hoping this time these are the right ones. They should be. These are the ones that I measured last time. So uh, so let's, uh, let's get on with this. So first of all, we wanna get the drum off. Now I've taken the handbrake off and you can see it's reasonably free. So now what we do is we use these couple of torques, undo those, but those are just little retaining units. They're not, uh, they're not really doing anything special. So let's just get these off and uh, then I'll show you how we're gonna go about getting the brake drum off because this can be a bit of a challenge. So to get this off, you'll find that it's it's pretty tough. You can get a screwdriver in and uh, start to prise it. The only problem you've got is that can damage the drum. In fact, to be honest, this drum is almost at the point where it needs replacing, but we're gonna try and get a little bit more life out of it. So what we want to do is we want to try and take this off. Now, luckily on this particular model, there's a trick to doing this. What you can do, is you can get a couple of bolts, put them in and kind of unscrew and that will force it apart. So I'll show you how to do that. So I've got a couple of M10 bolts and you can see they fit in here. Now I did give a little bit of wire brushing to these because they do get corroded and, uh, and full of rust, but you can see they feed in like that. So now what I'm gonna do is get a socket and just start to start to tighten these bit by bit and it should ease the drum off, which makes this reasonably straightforward on this car. Now what uh, what's also a good idea, give it a bit of penetrating oil just around, around here, which is where they do tend to fuse together. So let's give it a go. Wasn't too bad so you can see how that works all it's doing is it's screwing those bolts and pushing against the hub here and now we can see if we can get access to the brake so quite 
handy little trick those bolts keep those for the other side ready so now what we want to do is take the current brake assembly apart take it off remember how it went because we're going to be reassembling it with new parts but take them off and let's get the new shoes after recent efforts before I even start to take these off I want to compare them and make sure they are the right size make sure that all the fittings and everything look the same so let's just get the correct one you can see there's a notch there which is where it goes against the brake cylinder so that goes up there and that fits on there and that looks like a good size it looks like the right size you can see similar sort of fittings in place for the little fork in the middle where the springs go where it attaches Let's just for completeness, let's just check the other side as well. Let's just make sure. Yeah, these are the, these are the right fitting, so that's good. We can now take this off because believe you and me, you want to check that before you take these off because they're not the easiest things to put back on, let's face it. So first thing I'm going to do is take the retaining clip off, separate the middle, and we should be able to take it all out that way. Here we go, so take the retaining clips off first and then we pop the bottom out and then the top. So first thing is to get these out, just a pair of pliers and then just pop across like that. Don't forget to keep an eye out for the retaining pin at the back. Now we do have replacement ones of those as well so it's not too bad. So again pushing inwards and pop them out and again remember the orientation of them just for when you put it all back together so that you you're matching exactly how it came apart same thing with the the whole uh, the whole thing the whole shoe when you take it out it's a good idea to lay it on the ground exactly as you take it out so what we do is the bottom one is the one that comes out first you can see just lifting it around that plate there see that's getting it a bit more loose and then what we can do is we can pull the top apart carefully get it around the rubber so as not to damage it and then we can lift that piece out there and the only thing to do now is turn it over and this is the handbrake mechanism here, which you release by pulling the spring clip round, which is like the, the unlock for it. And then this should all just start to come out. It is one of these things where you could do with a couple of a couple of hands to do it because it is a little bit fiddly. But there we go. Pin through the middle and then that comes apart. So like I say, I'm gonna lay it out on the ground like that. I'm not sure if you can see that. There we go so that I know how it all goes back together. So now what I can do is get the new parts kit, assemble the replacement on the ground in the same place, like, like this, see? And then I can get the correct parts out the parts bag, get it ready, and then we can lift it into place. So I'm gonna do that, and then I'll show you when I get it held roughly in the right spot. So I've got the new one pretty much assembled, ready to go. So what I'm going to do is get the top in place first. Uh, sorry, no, I'm not. I'm going to get the handbrake cable attached first, then lift it into place, put it across the top, and um, then hopefully we can get it into place. Helps if I show you what I'm doing. Yes, yeah, so we get the handbrake cable attached at the bottom, lift it, and you can see I need to squeeze it apart so that it'll fit around the cylinder 
and then we can get the bottom into place. So it's a, like I say, it's a little bit of a juggling act, this one. I'm not a big fan of rear brake shoes because they are rather fiddly, unfortunately. I'm gonna need a pair of pliers to hold the handbrake spring back a little bit. I think that gives us a bit of extra to play with. There you can see that's into place and then you just push the additional little spring clip around and that just makes sure that it's not going to wander anywhere. So that's our handbrake connected. So now the idea is we lift this into place and we need to pull the spring apart to get it around and onto the, uh, the cylinder. Now that that's on the cylinder, get the base into place. Well actually what we want to do is put the spring on the bottom first. Just hook that round and then expand that. You see that fits around the plate on the bottom to help hold it into place and you can see now we're generally in the right place so what you want to do now is put the pins through from the back one there and one there and then we can get our new clips push them into place, get a pair of pliers to compress them and clip them in. And hopefully we're not going to be too far away. You can see I've got one in place. I thought I'd uh, record putting this one on because they're, they're not the easiest things. The, 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 the trick is to hold the brake shoe as flat as you can and then you see you've got to then compress and push and it's a it's a bit of a balancing act now I do find that a pair of pliers works but you've got to keep the pressure on pretty much everywhere all at the same time and it's fairly tricky see? and this is the problem it's not the easiest game in the world I mean, to be honest, if you've got another pair of hands, now would be the time to go and ask them to help. Well, I'm not going to lie to you, that took a while to get on. Uh, ended up using kind of angle pliers and uh, a lot of pushing and shoving to get that actually on. So that is a bit fiddly, but at least it's not going to go anywhere. Just to check the seating, it's sat on the inside there quite nicely. You can see that's fine. Now we might need to use the adjuster a little bit to uh, bring it in or out depending on how the drum fits. Because what we want to do is get make sure that the drum will fit over and then when we put the brakes on that there's enough movement that it'll stop the drum from spinning but then release it again afterwards. So let's uh, see what the drum fits like. Now that we've got all of that in place and you can see the drum is a bit of a tight fit and that's because the new pads are pushing out so far. So I think what we need to do is release the adjuster and what you do to release this adjuster is it just turns basically and I find it easiest to use a pair of pliers like this and you can see you just wind it in 
or out depending on where you want to move things so what I'm doing is I'm moving it in so that it's going to release a bit of tension off the pads Now it's somewhat near what I want to do is just carefully wind these in, make sure it's pushed all the way in. don't need to go in very tight they're just to, to help hold it in place you can see it's pulling it into the right place which is what we want there we go and you can see it's still binding a little bit so we could do with backing it off just a little bit more perhaps just to make sure that we're not binding the brakes too hard. So let's go back to the adjuster and adjust it a little bit more. As is the way on most of these, there is supposed to be an adjuster at the back, uh, basically a little access door that'll get you to that ratcheting piece that I was using earlier that should help us actually adjust that without having to take the drum back off. Unfortunately, that's almost like it's welded into place now, so I'm gonna to have to go back through taking the drum off and adjust it with the drum removed, which is a little bit of a pain, because as you can see, it's back to letting it out but so there is actually an access door that you're supposed to get at this from the back but as I say you can't get at that so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give it two three four five one for luck and hopefully that's going to be in the right position for us line up the retaining screws actually it went on a little bit easier there as well if you need to I find just a little pair of pliers to help centre the holes there and then let's put these screws in yep that's gone in nicely now you'll notice I don't use the ratchet immediately all I'm doing is using it and then finger fastening it that's to make sure you don't cross thread them which is always very important and then also when you tighten them up don't just tighten one all the way straight away swap between them and that'll make sure they go on nice and even and there we go that's better we've got more movement now still binding a little bit so perhaps a bit more but what I'm now going to do is test the handbrake out and make sure that it binds nice and solid so let's go put the handbrake on let's see how solid it is that's the handbrake on and that's not moving anywhere that's gone nice and solid so now let's release it and hopefully yeah it's released fully that's what you want to check to make sure that your handbrake isn't binding or jamming after any of this work so that's one side now do the same job all on the well, other then, side. So the important thing to remember now that we've done both rear drum brakes 
is to make sure that they work okay. So first thing, put my foot on the pedal, make sure the brake pedal still feels good. It does, it feels solid with the engine running. So you've got brake servo assist. Yep, that feels good. So what I'm gonna do is take the handbrake off and I'm on the foot brake and just let it roll back. And we're rolling, which means that the brakes aren't bound on, we're holding. Now I want a little bit of an incline. Um, and let's, uh, let's just take it for a very gentle drive. Again, pressing the brake quite regularly because I want to make sure that uh, all is as it should be. You don't want to find out that your brakes aren't working. And you can see they're working quite nicely. The other thing I'm going to check is after we've driven it a little bit is just to make sure that the brakes aren't binding. You do that by very carefully touching the um, the wheel hub spokes. Uh, I just because uh, if you if you feel heat, it means that the brakes are binding. It's transferring the heat, and uh, obviously we don't want the brakes to bind. So far feeling pretty good nice and responsive go down this hill here I'm actually gonna push the brake hard yeah that's working great be ideal is if I could find a steep hill, a bit like this. Let's just uh, pop the handbrake on. Yeah, now it does actually need adjusted I think, so at some point I'm going to need to adjust the handbrake. But all in good time. So I think that can be our next little uh, job. But otherwise, happy with that. So what we'll do is we'll head back up to the house. And we'll just double check that they're not uh, heating up too much. So let's just check. Yep, there's no heat there. And there's no heat there so that shows that they're not binding on so there we go so that's the uh that's the brakes done on the Vauxhall Corsa so hope you've enjoyed the video uh, please do like and of course subscribe and I'll see you in the next video